The first thing I think it's always important to remind people when you're dealing with a New Hampshire municipality is, is the general concept that we're not a home rule state. So when you're trying to decide what does a municipality do, what can it do, you first have to find a law that allows you to take a specific action. So our, our no home rule state um, is one where if you have a desire to take a certain concrete action, so for instance, um, I recently have received questions from towns seeking permission to adopt ordinances that would ban plastic bags at retail establishments. And so we had to research, does that city or town have the authority to ban plastic bags? So that's the kind of thing we have to figure out. And if we can't find a law that says you can do it, we basically don't agree that the town can do it, and if the <coughs> law says no law says we can do it, it's we, we if no law says you can't do it, it's not enough to say yes, we can go ahead and do this activity. So we really have to find some statute that says this specific action by the municipality is authorized. Um, now, when you're dealing with the budget and and the activities of the budget <coughs> committee. Uh, and moving forward to the adoption of the budget by the town meeting, or it could be the adoption of a budget by a city council or a town council, um, the really principal statute is RSA Chapter 32. The statute applies to all cities and towns, regardless of whether or not they have an official budget committee. And there are specific provisions that, that apply to a town that has adopted a budget committee. But the statute applies to every city and town, uh, the basic general principles. And then beyond that, if you have a budget committee, certain other additional rules apply to that town that has a budget committee. Um, and many towns will add, who have charters, will add provisions um, concerning the activities of the budget committee um, if uh, they choose to do so in their charter adoption documents. The purpose of the budget law is to provide a uniform method of appropriating spending public funds. And this, again, <coughs> applies to towns, school districts, village districts um, that do not have operating budget committees. It, it's a uniform law that governs how uh, monies are appropriated and how they're, uh, they're uh, legally appropriated, how monies are uh, kept in the budget, how they lapse, and how the money is eventually uh, becomes, uh, it goes into the general fund and, and or the unreserved fund balance. Um, one of the other principles that's important to keep in mind with regards to the Budget Act, RC Chapter 32, uh, is that it does impose penalties for failure to abide by the requirements of the Budget Act the failure to abide by the bottom line appropriated by the town meeting, because towns can't spend money more than what's been appropriated by the town meeting or by the city or town council. You can't spend money without an appropriation. There are always exceptions. And you always have to have a specific place in the budget that says you can spend the dollars for this particular purpose. Um, so violators who uh, do not abide by these limitations in the Budget Act, they can be removed from office by on petition. Um, and that petition can be brought by budget committee members or any interested member of the public. Now, removal for violation of the Budget Act is not automatic, but if there is a clear, serious violation of these duties to not spend with an out of appropriation or to overexpend the bottom line approved by the town meeting, those can be matters upon which a budget committee or a member of the public can seek to move, remove either a town administrator, other members of the administration, or uh, of governing body members. The other significant power which is inherent in the Budget Act, and it's not only in RSA Chapter 32, but RSA, RSA 21-J, which is the statute in the, the, the ways in which the town, uh, the, the state government organizes its departments. The Department of Revenue Administration's authorities found in RSA Chapter 21-J. That statute gives the DRA, the Department of Revenue Administration, to disallow any attempt to raise an appropriate funds if it's not done correctly. So, uh, although this would probably be interrupted by your bond counsel, if you don't hold the, the appropriate public hearing to raise an appropriate money by bonded indebtedness for more than $100,000, not only will you not get the, get the ability to borrow the money, but DRA will disallow the appropriation. This DRA will also disallow, if you don't know this, I'll tell you one of the things they will disallow. If you have an existing capital reserve fund, DRA has taken the position, I'm not sure they're 100% correct, but this is their position. If you want to put more money 
into an existing capital reserve fund, it has to be a separate Warren article. You can't appropriate money to an existing capital reserve fund from your budget. There are many towns that used to do that. DRA takes the position that RSA Chapter 35 does not allow that. So if you take any budgetary action on the floor of the town meeting or through the warrant that they believe is illegal, they will disallow the appropriation. And if you're not familiar with the process, um, they will disallow from the last article. They'll just go, they'll just assume from the article that is being disallowed and they'll just assume that the town meeting didn't mean to appropriate those dollars and they just start chopping the, the articles from that point back up the warrant. And, and then they've reached the point where the amount that's legally appropriated is allowed by them. That's so the 10% limit you're talking about. Well, 10% right. plus okay. they'll also, dis if you're disallowing an article too, right. Um, so those are the two significant forms of authority that the DRA has to control the activities of municipalities as to raise and appropriating money. Um, you might know this, I'm just again remind you of these terms. Whenever you hear the term legislative body, many statutes use the term town uh, or legislative body, that means the town meeting. So whenever a statute says the town may do something, that means it has to be done by the town meeting, and that's always the legislative body. The governing body is always the select board, or uh, it could be the school board, or it could be the village commissioners. So those two terms are always important because they're common concepts in the budget process. Um, now, budget committees are not required. As I said, the, the budget law is generally applicable to all towns, uh, is mandatorily applicable. Uh, but a town may have decide to have a budget committee, which uh, I was on a budget committee, so I know how it works. I know it's fundamentally what it's all about is the 10% limitation, that the town meeting cannot raise an appropriate money above 10% of the total amount appropriate uh, recommended by the budget committee. That's your fundamental authority. Everything, as far as I'm concerned, when I was on the budget committee, everything you do comes down to that. Now, yes, you are, you are have certain other activities that you do, you have to hold the final budget hearing, you have to sign the budget, et cetera, but the fundamental authority you have is you control the appropriation no more than 10% of the amount uh, recommended by the Budget Committee. Uh, so it really comes down to that. That's where the rubber hits the road. Um, and I, as I said, there's an official Budget Committee under RSA 3214, but many towns do have advisory or unofficial Budget Committees. Um, but those just advise the select board and the town meeting I know in many years, a town that I represent, the town of Ware, they had a finance committee. It was an unofficial budget committee, but whenever an article came up on the warrant to be discussed to raise an appropriate money, the moderator always turned to the finance committee and said, and what does the finance committee think? They had no statutory authority, but they did have uh, some moral suasion over the budget. Um, <clears throat> so. There's a lot of meetings for the budget committee. Uh, I, I don't know how you know the operative process goes in Hampton, but from my experience, uh, it, because I know that you're a calendar, uh, uh, you're not a fiscal year town, you're a calendar year town. Typically, you're looking at, you know, you're, you're ramping up your budget process, usually in September and October, and again, I don't know how Hampton operates, because at, at that time, you're, you're going to be getting prepared for the select board at some point getting a budget presented to them by the administration and typically before that happens the administration the town manager or the town administrator has asked the department heads give me your budgets for next year and the, the town manager gets the budgets from the department heads and the town manager cuts it down by five to ten percent and then the town manager sends the budget to the select board and the select board cuts that down to ten five to ten percent and then it finally comes to the budget committee now, my town, my, the budget of Silver would typically arrive on our desk somewhere in the middle of December, and that's pretty much when we would schedule budget hearings as discussed, discussed here. It could be an unlimited number. The way we handle our budget committee hearings is that we, I don't know how you do it here, but we got a huge book with the whole budget in it, and we had one from the school board and one from the town, and we would schedule our hearings uh, pretty much all through the month of January and February, and we had we had hearings twice a week. You know, one night was the select board, one night was the school board, and we just went through their budget line item by line item. Um, and uh, you know, the first year you're on a budget committee, it's pretty intimidating. And the, the thing that's most intimidating is that, you know, the budget numbers as they're generated to you from the school, 
versus the town are completely different. You've got a totally different, you know, you've got the town with all these uh, account numbers, and then you get the school has completely different account numbers, and that's because the Department of Education, which has a kind of semi regulatory authority over schools and how they do their budgets, they dictate that they have a totally different accounting system than towns. It's the way it is, and you're going to have to get familiar with it. So you go through all these uh, hearings, and you meet with all the, the, the administrators, and finally, you're going to finally have a budget hearing, um, and it has to be with seven days' notice. Um, and then at that budget hearing, you're going to recommend, you're going to sign the budget. You're going to say, this is what we're going to recommend. And I got to tell you, every year I was in the budget committee, I was trying to recommend a lower amount than it was approved by the select board or the, the, or the uh, uh, school board, but they never listened to me. I don't know why, but they never listened to me. Um, so, uh, and then, if, you know, you might have, I, I, no, is Hampton SB2? Yes. So you have your deliberative session, yeah. uh, obviously, which is designed to discuss and debate the articles and then you would have the voting session. Um, and, you know, for the budget committee, the key issue that you might have is if the town meeting modifies some of the numbers in the budget uh, or in the um, s separate warrant articles, you might modify your recommendations to go on the, on the, the ballot because obviously you, will pr you, you recommended a budget of X and the town meeting has put more money and you may not recommend that budget. So that depends on what happens at the deliberative session.